An activist, a minister, a dreamer. Martin Luther King Jr. became a national leader for the civil rights movement before he was shot and killed in 1968. His accomplishments and teachings continue to inspire generations five decades later. It was just days after his death when members of the Congressional Black Caucus tried to honor him with a federal holiday. But for 15 years, those pleas fell on deaf congressional ears. It wasn't until they collected six million signatures and Stevie Wonder wrote a song about the man called Happy Birthday that President Ronald Reagan declared the day a national holiday. That was 1983, 20 years after King's I Have a Dream speech in Washington, D.C. Well, today, 37 years later, hundreds of people show their commitment to civil rights by marching from Boise State to the Idaho State House every Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, every Martin Luther King Jr. Human Rights Day, that is. The first civil rights rally held ever held in Idaho took place on the state house steps 10 days after King's assassination. One of the active participants that day was a teenager named Cherie Buckner. Now a state senator, she grew up a fifth generation Idahoan and became the state's first African American legislator in 2010 when she was elected to the House of Representatives. 10 years later, the senator remains the state's only African American lawmaker ever elected. It's a role she was raised to fill, but one she wishes wasn't so solitary. We sat down with Senator Buckner Webb this morning, and she told us what it was like living in Boise in the middle of the civil rights era and why what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was doing on the other side of the country was so important to what was happening in Idaho. I lived in a household where my father was a really gentle guy, go along to get along. My mom was a rabble rouser, and as I've said many times, her credo was disturb the peace. She said from the beginning, because back in that era, people were Negroes or colored. My mom said, you're a black girl, my brother. You're a black man. Your walk in the world is different than the others. Stand tall, stand brave, and no, expect some difficulties. When we moved into our house, I think we've been there a year, and I'll never forget it, never, ever forget it. We were sitting at dinner. Mom thought she heard something, got up for no reason, looks out the front door, tells my dad there's a fire across the street in the, in the Wade's house. My dad jumps up, runs out the front door, and says, uh-uh, it's across in our front yard. And so that was one of the most significant um, realizations for me at, like, five. But there, we, we didn't have a critical mass. So my journey was probably a lot easier because I was an anomaly rather than a threat for most folks. So I, I would say I felt like it was my home. I felt like we belonged. But there was always this thing about be careful. You can't do everything other kids do. You have to be vigilant. My mother was really definite about those things. Yeah. I don't remember exactly where I was, but I remember the feelings that came up with it. And People gathered at our house, and then the next Sunday at our church, there was such an outpouring. There was such pain. There was pain because with every step he took, even when he was jailed, even when he gave his fiery speeches, we were there. I have a dream. We were there. We were here, but we were there. He was speaking for all of us. And I'll never forget the following Sunday. It was such an emotional time in particular. Folks were mad, but mostly they were hurt. They were frightened. Um, the old folks cautioned us about gathering on the steps of the Capitol because black people in this town were afraid they would lose their jobs if they were seen here. We stood on the steps and we sang and we did our thing and we were worried about the aftermath of it. But his death signaled, it was as if it was your favorite uncle, your whatever. I mean, it was really significant for us. It's really funny that sometimes our memories are short and that if one person is victimized, if one person is left out of, the, out of the circle, it's a detriment to all of us. We can't get happy and say, okay, we got Martin Luther King Day, we're done. That's not enough. There's people of every stripe that have to be welcomed in and treated with dignity and respect. And so, as it turns out, Human Rights Day is absolutely appropriate. Martin Luther King, Human Rights Day. Not one group stronger than the other, one less than the other. We have to look at our humanity and demand rights for all humanity. Senator Buckner Webb told us that for that first civil rights rally at the State House, they asked for the flag to be lowered to half staff, but Governor Don Samuelson refused. It was only because the governor was out of town that day and Lieutenant Governor Jack Murphy agreed the flag was lowered to honor the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Well, the activism that Senator Buckner Webb learned from her mother, she passed on to her children. 
One of her two sons, Philip Thompson, is the board president of Idaho's Black History Museum. And today, Philip got to take his young daughter to march on MLK Day for the very first time. Joe Paris takes us on this generational journey. My big awakening came probably like age 12, but um, she's much smarter than I, so I might as well start now. For the first time, father Philip and daughter Zeta marching together to honor Martin Luther King Jr. Now this is nothing new for Philip Thompson's family. They have fought for civil rights in Idaho for generations. In fact, Thompson's grandmother, Dorothy Buckner, helped lay the very foundation of change in the gem state. She helped lobby for legislation that had Idaho pass our civil rights law three years before the fits. Um, she was just your um, run of the mill hellraiser. That's just her natural disposition. And so um, that's what she instilled in her kids, my mother, myself, her and I were kind of joined at the hip. Now it is hip, his daughter Zeta. In the history of Idaho's black community, it's not new to her. But on this MLK day, she starts a new chapter of her own. She's kind of saturated with like the whole struggle, the fight, the whatever she knows. Her grandmother led the first fight. She knows her great grandmother helped pass legislation for civil rights in um, Idaho. She knows what I do. I can teach her. I can talk to her. She can understand like the significance of doing so and the uh, who, what, when, why. The history of civil rights and the battle Dr. King fought are extremely important. Thompson focuses on the why behind it. We neglect to bring along those that so when we step aside and that time comes sooner than you think that somebody is ready to carry that um, mission on. Taking Zeta to her first march continues the process of passing down history, but it also opens the door for her to one day pass down generations of knowledge. We're not here to tell them how it has to be done, simply um, expressing to them the need that it be done and do it whichever way that you can do so. And so for me to um, bring my child to the same, that's a little sappy moment, pretty cool. I mean, it's a tearjerker, but uh, yeah, I, I dig it. And of course, on this day, Thompson shares not just the words of Dr. King, but a call to action for future generations. The avoidance of apathy. We have to get involved and do something. And it's not something minimal. It's not something that has to be something Herculean, but you have to do something. Well, marches were just part of Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. He was arrested 29 times over the years, not all of them for disturbing the peace. Once while in jail in, in Birmingham, he wrote a letter to the local clergy who disagreed with his methods, writing the famous words in 1963, I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So, like Philip just said, you feel like you need to do something, you should do something, maybe make a difference. And you maybe missed today's events? Well, Boise State is hosting several opportunities centered around Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy, including happening later this week, a candid discussion on the legacy of student activism. That event is free and it's open to the public.